Hey, coming to the Morning Hustle right now, man, is the future. And a guy who's made a lot of people who you rocked out to in the past and the future, man. One time for L.A. Reed and Ruby Rose. First of all, <laughs> give him the title, bro. We, it's official? Yes. Okay, it's oh, called the... An exclusive? This is the exclusive. It's called the Suburban Hood Bitch. So. Suburban Hood Bitch. You heard it here first. I love it. Brand. I love it. It's just like, it's me because like i'm from kentucky my parents are like my mom's a doctor my mom and my dad's a lawyer i went to school but then i moved to atlanta and so i'm just like i'm like people be calling me a fake hood chick <laughs> because she's educated and there's nothing oh, wrong man. with that most no. women in the hood are educated and like from what i understand you also too just got finished shooting the cover for the ep yes uh what we looking like on the cover man what's the vibe paint a, paint a, a, a verbal picture for us it's just the two different sides of me so a sexy sides of both of me. Yeah, the good girl and the bad girl. And you have, I feel like your video is representing your life in real time. That's how I like it, right? And uh, you got your, it seems like that would be your mom and dad in the whole mix of things. Is exactly. that more true to life? Do they look at your sexualness, your sexuality? Do they get a little bit uncomfortable with it? In the beginning, definitely. But now, like, they see what I'm doing with it. Like, this is a business, so, mm -hmm. you know. They accept it and support me with what I'm doing. Ruby Rose, you're a woman with vision. Thank you. You had the vision to direct this video. It pops. You in and out like a boxer with it. You give it vibes. You give it angles. Has that always been a dream of yours to be able to control your own visual narrative and like you know bring your ideas not only from a musical standpoint but from a <laughs> visual as well? Um, yeah, I think so to an extent. Like I mean, I you know I run obviously my Instagram and it's definitely helped me get to where I'm at, like being with him, yeah. since him. So um, yeah, it's cool that like now in my music, I'm more hands-on. You have an so. icon sitting next to you. Uh, looks like you done came out of retirement and everything. Uh, retirement? No, retire. <laughs> you never retired. You, you fake retired. You fake retired <laughs> no, no, for like no, a day, no, I feel no, like. No, you no, said I you never, was going to calm down a little bit. and I've then never you went. stopped. No, never? Oh, never. Never planned to. No, 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 no. No time soon. No, no. And it's because no, I see why. Ever. I see why, because you have, you still have the best ear for talent. Thank you. And people have been talking about Ruby Rose for some time now, but she needed to get her ultimate shot. What made you go ahead and say, you know, this seems like a fit for me, the L.A. Reid brand, and I'm going to put my stamp on her? Uh, first, I love Ruby's voice. Like, I really love her voice. And, you know, it's really interesting because, obviously, Ruby is really, um, she's famous on, on Instagram because... You know, people. You know, people look at her physicality, mm -hmm. and um, for me, it was her voice tone. I, I just, I, I hate shallowness. I hate when people, you know, just get stuck on that one shallow feature. Right. Mm -hmm. This girl has a tremendous voice and a vision. She directed her video, right? She has vision. That's what I like. I like yeah. talent, right? I like Thank talent. You. Thank you. And Thank it makes you. sense. Your yeah, voice yeah, tone talent. is fire. You got the deeper. Everybody was trying to do you. the Nikki. Yeah. yeah the high right. pitch. Yeah. And you yeah. went the total opposite way and it got you noticed by a lot of people. Indeed. Like, and how do you find that voice? Because as a rapper, you know, when you listen to people that you, you know, looked up to, sometimes some of that rubs off on you. But what was that moment where you realized, all right, this is the tone I'm rocking with? Like, is there some Ruby Rose demos where, like, I don't know, your voice is a little higher because you still was trying to figure out yeah. You know, how you want the sound? Definitely. But I think after my song, Big Mouth, which is, like, the third song I ever made, mm -hmm. people, I didn't, like, I knew I kind of had a deep voice, but I really didn't even know my voice was, like, that deep until <laughs> after that. So then I just stuck with it. So when it comes to the lyrics, we know you got Double XL, which was a freshman cover, which is a big deal. Hell yeah. Usually it's one woman here and there, but it was a few <clears throat> women this year, and you were one of them. Now, when it comes to lyrics, it seems as though you go hard. Do you write all your stuff, or do you get a little bit of help? How does that work out? I definitely take help. Two minds, or as many minds, are greater than one. So I appreciate you being honest about that, because I feel like a lot of people would either lie, mm -hmm. or they turn around and... Uh, 
you know, make an excuse in a, a different kind of way. But I like that because a lot of people work with writers in this game. Hey, listen, all you have to do is look at the credits on most of the songs and you see about 35 names. Does it say yeah. L.A. Reid in it? <laughs> <laughs> there are some. I know that's right. <laughs> yeah, there are some. You know, and going back to you real quick, Mr. Reed, like what was like that first moment that you saw Ruby's Magic? We were literally in the car and uh, someone... I, I don't exactly remember who, I'm sorry, but someone played her um, her song, Big Mouth, in the car, and it, I just loved it. I, just, <laughs> I loved it, and it was that was it. And then when she walked in, um, you know, she she was she was fun, she was playful, right? And it was like she was like my daughter, you know. So Thank you. yeah, it was just great. I think she's incredible. I think the future is really bright. For Ruby, right. uh, oh, this is just you. she's just scratching the surface right now and gaining confidence. Now that she knows that she can direct, she knows that she mm -hmm. can rap, she can sing, and she won't. She she's not as confident uh -uh. with that, but she can <laughs> sing. She has so many <laughs> gifts, you know. And when she gets confidence around those gifts, I really believe that she will be, you know, she'll have global dominance. So does sexuality ever play like an issue in the things? Because we just heard like Mulatto. She was recently talking, which y'all both was in a WAP video. Hell yeah. So uh, she was just talking about an artist that's actually featured on her album that almost didn't let the record clear because he was trying to sleep with her or whatever, try to slide in her DMs. So does that ever affect you? Because you do have, you're very sexual, right? Mm -hmm. So the, I'm sure a lot of these artists try to approach you or talk to you has that ever affected you doing a record with any of them um, and don't be afraid to name names because they need to um, be called out sometimes oh no 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 it's okay but it's funny because somebody just literally asked me this question before but um of course to an extent there's always you know i'm a pretty girl i'm not ugly so pe guys obviously definitely try that but you know luckily i can use my looks to my advantage and like you know play the game but unfortunately definitely guys do be you know pressing for that but it's just part of unfortunately it's just part of like this industry it's very male dominant so dealing right. with that for me is regular so why do you feel like as a woman in the industry we don't speak up a little bit more about the people that do it because don't you feel like if you call the particular people out people will kind of stop doing that or male artists may stop doing it and i feel like female artists right now are at the forefront to speak up it it sounds good, but realistically and honestly, I've I found it better to just like you should do that. We should do that, but it never works in the girl's favor. So I think it's best to just you know. That is true. It sucks, but you know some stuff is part of life. Like some people are broke. Some everybody can't be rich. You know every like it's just. Um, yeah, broke ass was trying to sleep with me, and that's why I yeah. didn't get the record. <laughs> <laughs> no, but yeah. So it's it's I don't know. It's one of those like weird things, but you just deal with it. You have to have like, as a woman especially, you just have to have tough skin and a strong mind and keep. Cause they don't have no problem calling y'all out, child. Cause the the oh, really get name the, dropped in a minute. I mean, we could talk about Kodak. I mean, he called out Young Miami Dream Doll. Like he said their names, but I feel like when it comes time for the flip side, the women are protecting the men each time. Cause their fan bases are crazy. Like a girl will get toward that. Like. Girls be getting beat by these dudes, and like if they when they try to like come out about it, it just never works in their favor. Right. Like, but in in some cases, girls do definitely be lying about situations and stuff. But mm -hmm. like, um, yeah, so it's just one of those things, you know. Right. Gotcha. Now, Ruby Rose, you lived a little bit of everywhere, right? So your your story begins in Kentucky, right? Correct. Uh, at one point, you lived overseas for a little bit, right? Yeah, Switzerland. Switzerland. Then made your way back to the A. Who had the best game out of everybody? As <laughs> far as like dudes who like you know would try to shoot their shot, mm -hmm. like you know was was that stronger in one place <laughs> than others? Oh, <laughs> That's a great question. It is, right? of course, definitely Atlanta. But I like I like New York men's like swagger. Don't say that right here in Atlanta. Come on, <laughs> but no, yeah, I mean yeah, thirty three percent of Atlanta is New York. <laughs> like there's facts, so many facts, people facts, from facts, facts, facts. Shoot, uh, I'm from New York. You're <laughs> from New York. Yeah, yeah. you guys yeah. are from New York. We're, yeah. We gentrify. <laughs> you gonna see a bodega in a minute. <laughs> I love it. I love it. But yeah, I like. I mean, Atlanta guys definitely have swag too. But 
New York. What? New York is where it's at. <laughs> <laughs> do you prefer like dudes to step to you or are you more like a go through a friend kind of situation? Like what's the approach that you prefer? Because no one knows what to do anyone more. Everybody's so socially awkward because mm -hmm. we spend so much time just on phones on and whatnot. Phone. No one knows how to just be like, hey, my name is this. You know, because yeah. they feel like they might get shunned or get mushed by girls. Rejected, you know. hell yeah. Man, you guys better start asking her about performances and music and art and I art. Do, I want to ask her about uh, Jack Harlow. <laughs> you know you're an artist, right? Yeah, right? <laughs> I want to ask you about Jack Harlow. Now, the other day you did say, y'all both are Kentu from Kentucky, but you did say that you're going to be in a video. Uh, is it Jack Harlow? Because you posted him up right before that, and can we expect a Kentucky collab? A Kentucky Derby. Which city is he from? He's uh, Louisville. Louisville. Yep. Um, I would hope one day we have a collab, but no, that is not the person's. Everybody, I saw a lot of people comment that. Because you put it right before. I it did. was kind of like back to back. I know. I realized that <laughs> after, but no, that's not the man I did the video for. But hopefully one day, definitely, we work together. I'm cool with like his managers, and we have mutual friends, so hopefully. I was a video vixen for somebody else, but I actually have a song with the guy I did a music video for, too. And his name is? Surprise, surprise. Is this going to be one of the people that's on the EP? Um, Possibly. We're still, like, working on the track list, but possibly. And what about Drake? Because uh, you, he might have or may have not shouted out your name. Some people said he didn't. We know Drake always has wordplay yeah. or whatever the case. Did y'all ever speak after that whole situation? And can we expect a collab with him? I would hope. I can't, <laughs> you can't, I can't say anything definitely, but. I, shit, I would hope in the future, but in the song, people like me. I saw it was like a joking thing, like in it, but he was talking about a watch, but yeah. it's also like a play on my name because the line after he talks about Nipsey Hussle, like right. we're both Eritrean, and I had friends, I have friends who are friends with him, and they said it was about me. Like I know him, me and him are cool, so it's not like a far fetched thing for him to be saying that. Right, I didn't yeah. think so either. So, like, as you get ready to drop this opus on the people, April's the date. Can we get a hard date? Or are we just going to keep it loose and say April? We're going to say April for now. We're going to say April for now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, That's yeah. close. Is there more pressure on you right now? Because this is, like, a body of work. Mm -hmm. You know, is there more pressure to do that versus dropping, like, a single or, like, you know, debuting a new music video? Because, like, this is a collection, something that people will have to sit with for a minute. Um, Kind of, but I'm trying to just have fun and be like, I'm just trying to have fun with it. But like, there's more pressure in like regards to like the rollout and the promotion. Cause I know there's a lot of money like going into this and like paying people. So as far as that, yeah, but I'm really happy and confident with the songs that are about to come out. I'm really excited for everybody to hear and to turn up and do shows and everything. So oh, yeah, speaking of shows, what's going on with touring? Because you just performed in Seattle. Yes. Right. And yeah. how did that go? And, uh, you know, what's coming up for performance wise? Yeah, Seattle was very fun and very turned. I was just in Houston, too. I'm doing some shows with Summer Walker for her tour. I've seen that. Then I have some stuff with Mary J. Blige and some festivals for the summer. Mm -hmm. Mary J. Blige. It's going to yeah. be in Atlanta, right? Correct. The yeah, I'm hosting of one of those. Uh, yes, yeah, so I'll see you I'll out see there. You there. <laughs> yes. That's really big. Most of those are sold out too. the Mary festivals, I think almost every day. It's lit. I'm so, excited. you know, that that's great. How does that feel to be able to work alongside legends like yes. Mary J. Black? I mean, we already have, you have one right here, but then to just see that you're being more aligned with people like greatness. It's crazy, and it makes me feel like a lot more validated as an artist just because yes. people on the Internet, you know, it's talk crazy. So having this, these things happen in real life make me feel very good about myself. So, yeah. What about guy drama? Do you give her any advice on when these, because you know you had some little run-ins with like the little TJs, the DDGs, <laughs> and we even had an artist that was up here, Tusi. Oh, yeah, yeah. He actually said that he got in an altercation with your boyfriend over you coming to a show. Oh, your ex, sorry. Your ex-boyfriend yeah. over coming to a show. So we know that these guys are going a little bit crazy over you. Do you give her the advice, like, listen, step back from me? No, no, no. No, no, no you no, stay no, out of that? Yes, that's not my role. Because <laughs> you said like a, a like a daughter sometimes. Well, she has, no, he she does has, tell me to, like, just keep it private and, like, yeah. don't, like, let's put the focus on the music. Like, I don't yes. want to be attached to any, I don't want to be a rapper's girlfriend. So I'm, we shouldn't see no more of that moving forward. No more of that. That you think. Okay. I would hope not. <laughs> but. It's all the way out. Now, like, your comfortability level, do you feel, like, more free when you're in the studio cooking up 
or when you actually on stage rocking these songs? Because I've seen some, you know, some footage, right? <laughs> these people know these records of yours more than ever before, and I know mm -hmm. that has to feel great, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it feels very, very good compared to, I was telling these other people as well, I went on tour with Rod Wave last year, and, like, it was obviously his audience right. of people, they, so. They love They love Rod Wave. He can't even get a word He doesn't out. have to perform. Like, they yeah. scream it for him, but yeah. I was saying it was a humbling experience because nobody, everybody just stood at me and, like, stood and stared like they didn't know my music. So now having people, like, know my words and, like, really turn up with me feels... Good. But they you know didn't what boo. city that was that <laughs> when you finally saw the tide change? Because everybody knows that magic moment where like, oh, wow. This the city, awareness right? and the fact that the people actually listen to the records ahead mm -hmm. of the show have all connected. Do you know where you were when you mm -hmm. didn't have to work as hard on stage because they had your back like that? Probably like San Diego, which is a weird place. But mm. yeah, my la I did a show in San Diego right after New Year's and... They were very ecstatic to see me, so made me feel good. That's cool. So um, we also mentioned the WAP video earlier. We see a lot of collabs happen happening with the women, with the ladies. Can we see something with Cardi B or any of the ladies in the video, Meg the Stallion, uh, or do you already have something in the stash? Because, you know, sometimes it's a favor for a favor. I'm going to do the video. Yeah. You're going to do this hook. That was really a blessing, so yeah. it wasn't really a favor for a favor. But I hope in the future I don't, I don't put anything off i think anything can happen mm -hmm. just as long as i keep working hard my music gets better of course they'd want to do songs with me because you know i'd want to do songs with them it's like you know working alongside la reed like being next to a living magician because he's like <laughs> been doing this for so long has mm -hmm. connections with everybody like so most of the things you ask for i imagine it's pretty easy to get right absolutely he's a blessing <laughs> <laughs> what has been the toughest thing, you know, far as like working like new artists and stuff like that? Because I mean, every day is a challenge because, you know, it's really uh, about material, right? And just trying to find the right material, the right combination of songs. And, you know, that that's always a challenge, you know. It looks easy, but yeah. it's not, you know. You know what I mean? Sometimes the artists might make 25 songs to find one great song. Mm. Right? 25 but, is good. Some people some got people, thousands. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly <laughs> right, you know. So, um, you know, so uh, nothing about it is easy. Um, she makes it look easy. Mm -hmm. Oh, flawless, yo. Yeah. I mean, but that? even beyond the whole, like, you know, just making and finding the right songs, but even promoting the songs, because you, you come from an era where the whole approach and the process right. was different. Is it easier now because we have all these resources no, to bring somebody? it's much tougher. It's much, much tougher because the barrier to entry is so much lower. There is so much music. There's so many artists. There's 50,000 songs per day that come out uh, around the world. So you're really competing with so much volume that to cut through, you have to really have something special. So it's much tougher, actually. Gotcha. Yeah. And then you have platforms nowadays like the OnlyFans, right? Mm -hmm. But that's a little different from being an artist. And some people gave like a negative towards OnlyFans. Do you feel like that helps you as far as with your music? Or do you feel like it may take away a little bit? Because... You on there? I think definitely. <laughs> I, it depends. Like some people like might not might not take me as serious as an artist. That's what I've heard. Mm -hmm. But honestly, I really do not care because I use it to my advantage. Like at the end of the day, all publicity I think is good publicity. I'd rather be talked about than nobody care about me. Right. And this is it's a business. What Plus, I'm doing. Plus, you're also she's you're you're a rapper, but you're a star, and those yeah. are two different things, right? right. Mm -hmm. Rapping is music. Being a star is being visual and being on OnlyFans and yeah. being on Instagram stories and being, right? So it's, it's, she has two, a duality, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Um, How about acting? I definitely want to tap into that hopefully soon. I can but see that. Trying to get this music tight, so. But that, staying focused right yeah. now. And that's the best. What's the best advice that L.A. Reid has given Somebody you? Somebody just called me and asked me about, they said, you know, I'm trying to get Ruby in this movie, but uh -oh. I don't know if she's into it. Really? Yeah, I literally just got that this weekend. Yeah. Ooh. I can see you somewhere on one of the powers. Because they'll yeah. probably Being kill that G. chemist. Yeah, because Tariq <laughs> need a new girlfriend. I'm tired of these girls that's in there. You know, right? Oh, I, I think Tariq could use a new girlfriend. And she's a college girlfriend. graduate, this so is she, what I'm she trying to tell right you. Oh, you guys Come on great. now, but I'm going to need a percentage because I put it out there at least <laughs> five. Great. Okay, I got we, you. we good? Five. <laughs> <laughs> Ruby, what else are you interested in? Is there something else that we could see you uh, creating or... Do you have something, Jack, clothes or what? 
Yeah, like I'm really like just been big into like beauty and health, like nice. skincare, makeup. I'm a very big girly girl. Perfumes, oils, incense, like literally all that. Yeah, so you can have a poom poom incense like Erica Badu coming Ooh, from. Like the candy. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Maybe. <laughs> so like let's just say, right? You're if a mess. <laughs> you didn't spend those times freestyling with your friends at school and you just, you know, got your poly side major degree and just rode mm -hmm. off into the sunset. What would you be doing if there was no music involved? Like, like, right what, now? like what would your plan B have been? Mm, I was gonna go to law school. Oh, and, fire. but I want a family. I'm a like eventually when I'm married and everything. I'm I am very big on family and kids and stuff. So be careful. You might be pregnant on tour like the rest of them child. <laughs> Do not put that out there. Saying. What are you doing? You Try just blew your five percent. Oh, yeah. Three. <laughs> Reverse her five to head crack. I'll, I'll it out no, of no, no, my dear. <laughs> Now, nah, Big Fizz, how big do you see your family being? You think it's two boys, two girls? What's up? I was thinking three boys, two girls. That's wow. crazy, but you're not going to cook for them because I seen you can make good cereal. I can make I, good. <laughs> what about anything else? No, cooking? I can cook, actually. I've tried to stop eating out as much because okay. just we don't know what they're putting in the food. I've found hairs in my food, uh, so I definitely cook at home a lot now. What's a good date for Ruby Rose? Wait, are you dating someone right now? Um. Yes. Mm, yes, that's kinda. a yes. He better not be a rapper, girl, because you just said he told me he was. Is he a rapper? Wait. He's a rapper, too? <laughs> oh, definitely a rapper. I can tell, like. No, no, Is he no. from New York? No, no, no. You say you like New York dudes. Usually no, you I'm can't not, say another yeah, guy. No, I'm not dating anybody in particular, you know. I just got out of a relationship, so just taking my time. And I'd be busy as Heck, so I be. I don't even be in town very much. So. What's a, what's a good date though for him to take? Um, it's ideal, like, like probably just like a nice restaurant. But it sucks because like I can't really go out in public with know. guys because people be weird and take pictures and stuff. But just a nice restaurant, candlelit dinner, that's a nice vibe. What about gifts? What's the most expensive gift a guy has gifted you? Um, a guy got me a pair of like big solitaire rock earrings that were like 40,000. Mm. But then I got robbed and somebody stole them. Oh, oh man. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yo, so real quick, you know, talking about like, you know, gifts, love, things that people can say about people. We do this thing called asking for a friend, mm -hmm. right? And one of the topics today is like, a guy was with a significant other and it was playing like a game. One of the game <laughs> things was like, hey, tell us something about the person you're with that's not about their looks. And he said she was reliable. So mm -hmm. now he's on the verge of getting broken up with. Yeah, dumped. Do you feel like that was a dacial slur, and that <laughs> calling someone reliable is as a bad in, thing? Like, as in, like wow. she don't has she doesn't have things going on for herself, so that's why she's reliable. Well, he just said she's reliable. Like, tell us one thing about your girl. She's reliable. Now, his friends who will like answer the question after is like, yo, it's she's like kind-hearted. Yeah. yeah, I would definitely prefer one of those. But I mean, exactly, guys, reliable is a car. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, or a place oh. to stay. You yeah. said reliable in your head, didn't you? <laughs> but don't women and like when their cars just, start when they turn wow. them on? <laughs> you want something that's going to be there for you when you need it. We don't want to be compared to like cars or I think yeah. employee when I think reliable. Yeah. You know, like a, right? Wow, Definitely. About this <laughs> but guys, like guys, guys don't think like that. Ask the opinion on that versus women because like we like reliable things, things we can yes. depend on. So you mm -hmm. would like somebody to call y'all that if they were like a, a good thing in a relationship that, about your partner, describe them. Reliable? That's what they say about me. <laughs> Consistent? <laughs> How many of them? Because you said that's what they say. I'm old, honey. Uh, I, I was talking about the girls now. Oh. Oh. I'm talking about my children. <laughs> See? Now, it's okay to say that about your dad, but not about your husband. Yeah. You don't want it, you want your husband to come home, right? Comes home every night. Nah, That's a very reliable dude. You, you better ain't no home. <laughs> the well, there it is. Well, yo, Ruby Rose, home. man, can't wait to see where this star goes, man. It seems like the future is yours. The EP coming out in April ish, yes. right? Yes. April ish. <laughs> title, title, title. The Suburban Hood Bitch. Yeah, I love it. I can't wait to see it at the Grammys, right? They like you. the winner for the best album of 2022. Ladies and gentlemen, Ruby Rose, Suburban Hood Bitch. Yeah. It's Marcus Stewart, 3 It's a vibe, right? <laughs> I love Thank that. you. We're here for it, man. So uh, if people want to follow you, Miss Rose, how can they tap in? Instagram, at the Ruby Rose. Twitter, Ruby XX Rose. OnlyFans, Ruby X Rose. Yeah. LA 